como no uno. So my name is Stanley Rikwari. I'm the producer and director of the Daosa Trails movie. Uh, the Daosa Trails movie was born out of a desire to tell stories that um, stories that can sustain us as a people, stories that the younger generation can learn from. It's about virtue, about uh, the way they should live their lives. Archbishop Bensi Daosa lived a life that's worth emulating. Uh, he did a lot of things, he affected a lot of lives. He did not live a selfish life like so many people live nowadays. And um, I think the people he affected, they are the, they are the testimonies of his life. Uh, those people immortalized him, the things he did through the power of God, and with emphasis, the things he did by the power of God and in the name of Jesus. My name is Doc Kerry Omagomi. I am one of the crew members of Idaosa Trace movie. I'm also a cast in the movie. She's the daughter of the Bishop of my church. <laughs> it's actually inspiring faith in a faithless world. I read Matthew 10, 8. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Pastor, have you raised the dead before? Hi, my name is Daniel o. David. Uh, I'm a logistics manager for the Hosea Trail. My brothers and my sisters, I say today, we get something to talk about. Let me get a cup, cup of coffee. <laughs> You're in a coma. <laughs> Hi, my name is Amel Kosun, and I was part of the crew that was involved in making the Hauser Trails. During the movie, we shot basically in different blocks, Benin, Lagos, Lagos, Benin. So we're really shuffling up and about. So we basically had different crews here in Lagos and also in Benin. The Lagos crew was a little bit small, focused on specific details. Um, it also actually is actually a faith-based movie. It's um, a movie that I would say instills faith in the lives of people. It actually talks about um, the life of um, Idahusa and um, a reporter basically. It's, I would say the two one story. A reporter who came in search of something else and found, I would say, salvation in the end. But it's, it's, it's a good movie. You're welcome, Mr. Buck, Pastor of Stars, All Nations for Christ Bible Institute. Thomas Buck Jr., journalist. I hope you're not the doubting one. <laughs> My Niger people, what in the happen? No shaking. My background is television news. I was an investigative reporter for TV stations all over the United States for many years. We, we sort of see eye to eye on a lot of things. And that's important, especially if you're having a relationship actor and director, you know? Um, and now we're, we're getting into writing a, a, a screenplay together. So, you know, we're gonna have to have to get along and such. And, and we just do, it's, it's, a, it's a fun, relationship. I, th I respect him and I know he respects me and that's really really important and I know and I said after the movie I said were you happy with my performance and he said we'd still be shooting if, if he wasn't so um, you know he got out of me what he needed he said he squeezed it squeezed it lemon, that lemon and got what he wanted. The movie was made from the standpoint of preaching faith to a faithless world uh, so it was intentionally made as a faith-based movie, uh, no apologies for that. Take your place under the tree, the voice said. <laughs> then an old woman started walking towards me with a heavy burden on her head. I helped her to lay down her burden. Then a fresh leaf sprouted from the dead tree. We've been on this for like eight years now, uh, doing research, uh, very extensive pre-production. And one of the things we decided to do with this movie was to look for 
the actual people whose stories were written in the books about Idausa. And uh, the story of uh, the girl who fell from a story building and cracked her skull and died and he prayed for her. The story of the first person he raised from the dead called Inuata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside the room. So my people was crying. Child, be healed. Child, be healed. Child, I have instructions from my pastor to come and wake you. Wake up! Uh, the story about the guy who was in a, at a crusade in Kenya, his mother brought him to the crusade, he didn't have eyes. And then the mother so believed that her son would live there with new eyes, and it happened. My wife Margaret told me about the woman's situation, and I was instantly led to pray for her child. Her faith was overwhelming. And then I realized that you could tell stories like this and the world we live in today, people say, oh, film trick, how are you sure? Oh, what is the evidence? So the first thing we did was to look for the people whose stories have been recorded in these books. And it took us eight years to do that uh, because, of course, we didn't know where to start from. But the good thing is that for every miracle that was reenacted in this movie, the real people it happened to can actually be reached, they can be contacted, and really, and with evidence. Uh, so that's a win for us. Ordinary native daughter tried to can raise her back to life. Said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. Said, he asked my father the question. He said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life? My father said, yes. Although my father was not a Christian, but he had that belief that God can do it. Really, our father go there with some of his members. When they go to the room, my parents was in the next room listening to what will happen next. They were praying. They were praying. After they pray sometimes, God delivered that answered prayer. I said, I, I still have what to do for him. So he bring him back to life. That is how I'm living today, to his glory and honor. Uh, secondly, because the story is being told from the story is being told from the standpoint of Thomas Book, uh, the storytelling mechanism is not direct. It's not a biopic. What we've done is not a biopic. I must say that emphatically. It's not a biopic. It's a story about the accidental uh, discovery of the man called the Dahosa by an American journalist who comes to town to pursue another story. So he comes looking for one story and he ends up getting the story of Archbishop Benson Idahosa. It's September 10th, 9.47 p.m. and I'm back in my hotel room. 
just had an encounter with a very religious hottie. So needless to say, I'll be uh, sleeping alone again tonight. I haven't gotten my interview with Adahosa, preacher, who I assume had something to do with a that mirror at the hospital. I'll get that tomorrow. I need my story. It's a fictional story that has real life events intertwined with it. Uh, so we have a fictional story and we've infused true situations and true stories into this fictional story. And, uh, but of course, it's a movie and it's always important to have the viewers in mind. The people are going to go out there at the end of the day and see the movie. So for that purpose, uh, Thomas' book is fictional, so I had no issues with him. But then I realized that there they were, they weren't so many scenes, because we just picked like four miracles that Idahosa performed in his lifetime. And one of them he performed while he was still a young guy. So we had this young boy, uh, Damola, who was a final year student in the University of Benin when we shot the movie. And he played the role of the young Benz in Idahosa. First of all, I met Mr. Stanley four years ago when I was in 100 level through my lecturer, Mr. Webber. And after he put us through some exercises and then telling us where do we see ourselves in the next four years and all of that, um, he told us that he would involve us in one of his productions. And truthfully, I had totally forgotten all about that. And then four years on, he came around and then he talked about it and then he was holding auditions. And then I just said, okay, fine. Because in the first place, he told us we would be in his production team and we will work with him. So he would just uh, let us know a few things about what it is to be on a film set. And then when he came later on, he now said he was holding auditions that he was going to give one of us a chance to be on film. And I was like, oh, let me just try out. And well, I did. And then in the evening of that same day, he told me, uh, you are going to be playing Young Besson. I actually didn't believe because uh, I was like, uh, me from school to play Young Besson in a movie like this. Because I, I had to ask a few questions about who Papa was because I didn't really know him. But then he now left and then he came back two weeks later and then he called us and then the, his production manager came to meet me. Are you ready? Um, you are going on set today. And I was like, oh, this thing is really serious. And I, well, it was, it was really fun. I got the script and uh, first day, it was really difficult. Um, do this and do that. Uh, me coming from the theatre, from stage productions, I really didn't understand. But I, I'm really glad that I was able to go through all of that experience because I know I can take it from here on and then go somewhere else and then I'll be, I need to be um, seamless for me. So that was basically how I got the role and um, I really want to say a big thank you to Mr. Stanley because not so many people would uh, give you the chance. But for the older Benson Idahosa, uh, Charles Okafor uh, got that role. And I realized that there weren't so many scenes that Charles Okafor was going to appear in. And of course, we knew that the viewers would be moved by that sight of Charles Okafor looking like Benson Idahosa. So, so we took a, co a couple of creative liberties. Uh, for instance, at the time when Charles Okafor, and it was intentional because I, I even told him to, he asked me, uh, we had we had done a schedule and we, the, with the casting we had very young Benson Idahosa, mid-aged Benson Idahosa, then Benson Idahosa as at the time when he died. Uh, but we scrapped the mid-aged Benson Idahosa. And for the scene with the Kenyan crusade where the boy who didn't have eyes got two eyes, uh, that was supposed to be Benson Idahosa at his mid-age range. Uh, but if I realized that if we did that, then we'll have only one scene with Benson Idahosa looking like the Benson Idahosa whose memory and image is in everybody's mind. So we took that creative liberty 
and we didn't stick to the exact timing, as in the dates where that happened. So we had to represent that with Charles Okafor. Uh, and if you actually follow the story of Benson Dalsa, you know that as a time when he performed that miracle, it was not yet the image that we portrayed in the movie. But what we've done is we managed to put that there so that people have to see more of the physique and the semblance of Ben Idahosa that they have in their mind when they think about him. So I think that's about the most creative liberty that we took. Most of the depictions there, like when, uh, when the young Margaret Idahosa witnessed her cousin being raised from the dead, uh, the way that played out in the reenactment was based on the first hand account from the Archbishop Margaret Idahosa herself. I interviewed her in 20, because like I said, we've been on this for like eight years. I think her interview, where I got most of the facts to depict that scene, that interview was done in 2014, or 2013 or 2014. And she gave me very clear details of what happened, how she was peeping when he was praying for her cousin, and how when the girls knew she just started running. She, knew, she didn't know where she was running to, she just knew, I've seen this thing that I've never seen in my life, and she was just running away from the scene as fast as possible. Let's go in four, three, two, one. Mama, let's grab you this, my action. The year he left, you know, before then we traveled, and then we came back home. The year, that, that was 1998. It was after he left that I fully comprehended the caliber of man that I had been living with. It was as if the, the top of my roof was just taken away and I was left empty. And then the candidness of uh, the direction that we took when the young Benson Idahosa was raising the little girl from the dead. That was also informed by, partly by her testimony and uh, very heavily by Archbishop Benson Idaosa's own testimony. Uh, because what I did, I had to go and I had to buy every book written by and of him uh, to get all the facts right. Then I got every message I could lay my hands on where he talked about the things he did. And then he actually said, you know, when you think about you think about, oh, Benson Idaosa, man of God, he just went there and said, wake up, and the girl woke up. Child, I have instructions from my pastor to come and wake you. Wake up! Child, I am begging you, please, wake up, wake up. Even in his own account, he, he, he makes you understand that that's not how it happened. He had never done it before, and very instructive, uh, Benson, he was just a young boy in church called Benson Idaosa, he was not even a pastor when that happened. You mean what you say that we can raise that person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised that person before? Uh, no. Why? <coughs> but you say I can do it. Yes. In, In the, the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Eh. Thank you, sir. Uh, so he was not the big man of God. He was just a young guy who had this message in church and was convinced and went out to try it out and it worked. Uh, so that's a strong message there for everyone who's a Christian. You don't have to be a pastor, a bishop. You don't need to have known the scriptures for like 20 years. If you just hear the scripture now, you believe it and you act on it, you actually get the result as long as you act by faith. Talking about Charles Ocavo's character, that is the role of act picture Benson Idahosa, uh, we had to get a lot of things right because um, especially the costuming. Uh, so a friend of mine, not just a friend of mine, actually my brother, Maya Tafu, uh, made the costumes. Uh, we were at the office together, we looked at the pictures. Uh, he's a professional, so looking at the material already, he knew the year. So he went to the market, got the right lace, 
uh, uh, Charles Ocampo was not even there. We called him over the phone. He told us his statistics. Uh, so the guy who was taking the measurement used my body as a, like just a benchmark. And then they made it and it was a perfect fit. So making the Agbada was quite interesting. You know, these days, you know, Agbada has changed just the way we make it. And even the, the cut of the kaftan inside kind of like closer and fitted to the body. But then it was really just big, you know. So even trying to rewind my hair to make it even as square as it was supposed to be was a difficult challenge. Um, so we got around it. It's actually very simple to do, but just agreeing with your mind and your head, you want to make it as, you know, old school <laughs> as it was originally, as it is originally supposed to be. So we got our hand doing that and the pockets on the side, huge pockets on the side, huge pockets in the front and all that. They're making a really small embroidery on the neckline again. Now we're going for more outlandish embroidery on our Agbada. So trying to make it exactly the way Adisha Benson did also wore it then was almost like you deciding to wear like, you know, bell bottom trousers now, <laughs> you know. It's almost against what you what you would do. So my tailors even thought about it like, ah, uh, Oga, you sure seen that so it's supposed to be because it looked like it was not what it was supposed to be. But that's exactly what it was at the end of the day. The moment we finished shooting the scenes with Charles Ocafo as acting as Benson Dausa, we threw the pictures online and we saw the reactions. Even till date, even as we speak, people are still wowing at how Charles Ocafo looks like the late Archbishop Benson Dausa. So with the casting, I think we did a good job. I must give kudos, however, to the lady who did the makeup for Charles Okafo and for Professor Ie, who acted as uh, Margaret Idaosa. Her name is Coletta Brown, Audion Coletta Brown. She's in Benin and she's doing a fantastic job. And she was the one responsible for bringing Charles Okafo out as Archbishop Benson Idaosa. We had pictorial references and uh, she came in. She had never done it before, but I told her, I said, you know what, you will do this, you can do it because I knew she was hardworking, I knew she always wanted to attain excellence, so I told her, you know what, I know you do it, so do it. And I don't care how you do it, but I know you're going to get it right. So she went online, did her research, came back to the hotel in Benin, and Charles Okafo arrived, and we got straight at work. And she got it right uh, with picture references and everything. In fact, while we were still doing the makeup at the hotel, even the people, uh, the staff of the hotel, whenever they are passed because the door was left open, they'll be like, hey, see Papa, <laughs> you understand? And where, where the worth of her work was really tested was when we had the world premiere in Benin. So we had the world premiere, so I called her and I said, you know what, I want to do something. 15 minutes to the end of the movie, you're going to take Charles Okafo backstage and you're going to make him up as Archbishop Benson Idaosa. In 15 minutes, she transformed Charles Okafo, who came to the world premiere as Charles Okafo, into Benson Idaosa. And then when we introduced him, he walked up. Even Archbishop Margaret Idaosa could not believe her eyes. And the pictures are still trending. Like, as we speak, people are still sharing those pictures, saying, did he come back to life? This is the throwback picture. This is the picture from the past, because they still can't believe that. Uh, that, that picture is not real and uh, I must give kudos to Audion for a job well done and I believe this is not the last we we'll do together. Uh, she has proved herself and definitely I, I don't run away from people who know what they are doing. After we got the resemblance uh, in Charles Okafo, uh, so we put it out there and people kept saying, oh now they've gotten the face, let's see how they'll do with the voice. So uh, we did some research, we found someone in Benin who actually sounds like the late Archbishop Benson Idaosa. But getting him to do the voice was really difficult because he was very busy and he was hardly around. So we had to go the other route. So what I did was I went online, downloaded all the messages we could get, uh, videos, audios, and then we started, <clears throat> we started transcribing them. So, what we did was we knew what he wanted to say, so we're picking words and lines from different messages and different videos. Uh, so perhaps we pick he from one video, we pick is from another video. And then what we did at the end of the day was to run all of them together. And that's how the character of Ben Sinidausa, played by Chazoka for spoke in the movie. Here am I, send me. Where's your babies?
So <laughs> for every aspect of this movie, we actually went the whole mile to make sure we did a great job. Uh, we did not depend on the sound from set. Uh, so the entire dialogue in the movie was, uh, we implemented ADR, which is automated dialogue replacement, and the process is very tedious. My brothers and my sisters, I say make we open our Bible to Matthew chapter 10, 8. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Let's come back. Let's just leave him in the next flat. <laughs> I need to laugh it out. <laughs> yeah, let's go back. Stop it, you know, you're kind of more emphatic in that guy, so I need it to sound like that. Because you know, the voice doesn't sound like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a little different. You know? And a lot of actors don't like it, but for me, it's all about getting the best. Of course, if you don't do it there, you can't have the you can't have the movie in different languages. Because what we've done now, we have our audio track on top, then we have the sound effects, music score, foley, and everything on different layers. So. Once we mute one channel that has the voice in any language, we replace it with another language and straight up, we have the movie in another language and subtitled to suit them if they actually need that. Uh, so we had ADL sessions for the movie. David Shifter was in the US and we had his ADL over the internet. So what we did, we connected via Skype. Uh, so we paid for a studio, uh, we paid for a couple of sessions and he was there and then when he was done, he copied the whole audio file, attached it uh, through the internet and sent to me. And then I took them and pieced them up together. And so we replaced the audio from the original video uh, with the audio that we got from the studio. So listening to the movie, the audio is impeccable. Now to talk about the challenges shooting this movie, the challenges were enormous. Shooting in Benin alone was difficult because we all know Benin, one second is raining, then the next second the sun is shining. So it was quite difficult to shoot. Sometimes we lost up to two days because of the weather. While we're shooting this movie, we had certain issues that picked up basically during the shoots, maybe um, Minor issues, but those minor issues actually blew up. We're about to start shooting, then maybe we've shot the previous scene and the weather was okay, it was not raining. They want to continue, then it starts raining. And you know they will have, will have continuity issues if we did that. And um, that's really adding to our time. There were a lot of challenges though, moving from one place to the other. There were times we had to shoot um, at night, midnight, you know, moving from a known destination to an unknown destination, villages basically. So it was it was challenging, you know. No matter how it is, having different people with different idea and mindset coming together. The one major thing that I observed with uh, working on this set was discipline, the level of discipline that the director tried to uh, uh, imbibe in his crew. The there was no not like laxity. A lot of things logistics wise, because we're not shooting in Lagos where we have full control of uh, of everything. Uh, we're shooting in Benin, so we have to depend on other people to help us make things happen. And well, at the end of the day, everything turned out right. Uh, the good news is that the movie is ready. We have got this ready. We got we got the release dates for this movie before we even started shooting. So far, it also trails as a, has won about three awards now. It's the first faith-based movie made by a Nigerian filmmaker showing in Nigerian cinemas. And I think, I think, I think that's worth celebrating. So Uh, 
would like to thank Film One Distribution uh, for distributing the movie. Um, there has to be a reason why movies like these have not been distributed in the past. Uh, so for all it's worth, uh, I'd like to appreciate them for distributing the movie. I'd like to thank the cast. Uh, we had an amazing cast from David Shifter to Ikunle Do, aka Frank Donga, Osa Sigodaro, Patrick Doyle, Lisa Mayer, uh, Michael Morigbe. A lot of people were in this movie who made, who, who, who made it fantastic. Uh, the movie would not have succeeded without the full support and cooperation of everybody who did one thing or the other. And we have uh, three more stories to shoot after the Daosa movie. Uh, we're shooting the film about Fela, the one about Ken Sarawiwa, the one about the late Delegiwa who was killed with the letter bomb. Uh, all those mysteries, a lot of things shrouded in mystery. Uh, we, we see it as a duty that we owe our nation and the next generation so that they can know uh, the true narrative of the things that unfolded in our nation even before they were born. Uh, because I think a people who cannot learn from their history, they will keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And nowadays when history is being taken out of the curriculum in schools, I think uh, filmmaking has become a very strong tool to make sure those stories are told and passed on to the next generation. Uh, and right after those, we're making the hero movie. Uh, you might call it a movie about superheroes, like the Marvel stuff, but uh, we won't be having Americanized characters wearing jumpsuits and capes and all that. Uh, they'll be very Nigerianized if there's any word like that. So a lot of people might say, okay, that was biting so much, uh, but come on, that's why we're Mighty Just Studios, man. Why walk when you can fly? Peace out. <laughs>
just remember They that wait on the Lord shall not faint Like a lion, be sure the words from your mouth Open your eyes, oh you blind, it's the day of your salvation Be strong in the Lord, oh you From the mouth of angels and things, years of day praise and strength